I've got one more SSH demo just to complete the trifecta so that you know about it. And a uh, quick question, Nick asks, is there any support for generating the SSH, SSH keys or just assume they already exist? Uh, right now, it assumes that they exist and that the user's generated. Uh, we do have an RFE for generating them in co-managed registry and sending the user the public part, or I'm sorry, the private part so they can download it. Um, but we haven't we haven't got to that RFE yet, but it is on the on the list. All right, this is a, a little bit different um, demo. Um, let me bring up a web browser again. Just gonna remove some cruft here. Um, and actually, let's see. There we go. Um, so I am going to uh, demo the use of a tool uh, called Open On Demand. So Open On Demand is a tool that comes out of the Ohio Supercomputing Center in the US. It's got pretty good traction now around the world. And I know there are some deployments in Australia. If you look at their deployment map, they have a few. I don't know exactly where. And you can think about Open On Demand is really, it's a, it's a proxy from web space into shell space. I think that's a good way of thinking about it. Uh, and so I set up a, an open on demand server for myself and I'm just gonna browse there. Let me grab this URL. It's gonna ask me to authenticate immediately. So I'm gonna go right into the authentication flow. Uh, again, I'm using my University of Illinois identity, but I've already got a session there. So it should just recognize that session and it should click me over to the Open On Demand server. And you can see I'm logged in as S. Caranda here. And uh, Open On Demand supports more than just shell access. So that's what I'm going to demo in just a second. Um, and uh, it's really quite a rich application. And all of this web space that you see can be customized. So, you know, it can all be. Um, skinned or branded as necessary for an organization. And you can give users access to uh, file spaces. Um, again, you're acting as a proxy from the web space into file space. Uh, you can manage batch jobs for batch computing. Um, they have the ability, I haven't set any up, but you can set up interactive applications. So if a high performance computing center wants to allow their users to get um, remote desktops into a site. Uh, this supports it. Uh, so it's really quite a rich tool. And I, I'm not going to demo any of that functionality, but I will demo the shell access. Um, so you can have a, a list here of uh, different nodes that you can log into. And when I do that, um, I get a new tab opened up. And uh, it automatically drops me in because there's uh, an agreement between uh, the open on demand node and this head node so that it knows who the user is. Uh, let's see, I think I can type who am I? Yeah, so it knows. And again, this is the UID that's been mapped and co managed so we can control exactly which ID gets sent. And this is uh, shell access. And um, it's actually pretty good. So if you've been around the space for a while, you know there were some web-based shell um, programs available, Java applets in the early days, and they were pretty terrible. Um, but I think this is actually pretty good. Um, and you can actually use it to, here, this is just a Slurm batch file that I might want to edit. Um, I've been impressed with, uh, and you have different themes, um, let's see if I can make one that's a little lighter. There we go. Um, so it really does a good job. I, I uh, made sure to try to use it for a while and actually work with it. And it's a pretty good, pretty good terminal. So I, I think it's a decent way uh, to give users access to uh, computing clusters. Again, mapping from that web space into uh, uh, high performance space. I know um, some of the big high performance computing facilities here are certainly looking at open on demand. I don't know if they've committed to going down that path yet, but it is on on their roadmap for investigation anyway. Yeah. And what's really nice is that actually all three of these SSH 
techniques are complementary. Uh, a center can do any or all of them together, right? And so if you have users that you think would like the device flow and they're capable of doing it, um, you can certainly um, you know, set up a, a head node with that. Um, if you are exploring the more sophisticated access managed through on demand, you can do that on a head node. Uh, and if you just want users to be able to log in with an SSH key, you can set that up and upload it to co-manage. All these things can work together. And Nick asks, if you close the browser window or it crashes, does it keep your session active? Uh, it does not. So the session would go away, yeah, if the browser uh, crashes or anything like that. Because it's really, again, it's a proxy. They use a technique on the back end. They're doing some fancy things uh, with Nginx. And so they're proxying from web space into user space with a per user Nginx process. And that's you start looking at the technical details, that's how they do it. And it's very clever and it's very nice because it, it keeps everybody from stepping on each other and it's very secure. All right, so that was uh, the on-demand. Any more questions about that? Otherwise, we're heading into the home stretch here. I've got two more quick demos.